Hi, welcome. This video is about using your iPad to grade performance assessments and give feedback on Google Classroom. Does this grading scene look nice to you? Jammies on the sofa? Uh, not that anyone's doing that, right? Here's the video. All right, so here is my template that I'm going to use uh, with this uh, Bach Prelude Suite Number One feedback that I'm going to grade uh, the students on. Um, and what I did was I took my rubric that I created earlier for another assignment um, and plugged it into this template. If you've never used rubrics on Google Classroom uh, and you want to know how, again, I'll put a link uh, here in the cards. Uh, another video that I made going step by step through rubrics and how to make them, how to use them on Google Classroom. Um, so go and check that out. If you've already looked at that and you've already created rubrics or you were already using them before, what you can do is, let's go back here for just one second to this assignment on this rubric. And you have the option to export to sheets. And it looks like this when you do that. Okay, all right. And then you can just take and copy and paste all of this, which is how I created this inserted table and then pasted all of this in here. And I'm going to show you how we're going to use that here in a second. So if you've already got this all typed up uh, in a rubric somewhere on Google Classroom, export it, copy and paste. Okay, looks like this. I'm going to explain here and show in a second why this is so big. And you can put anything in here. And this is the big advantage of using uh, a template like this and scoring with the iPad is that it's much easier to give lots of feedback really fast uh, to students. I have all these check boxes under rhythm feedback, rushing, dragging, needs metronome. I mean, you can, you know, sky's the limit. You can put whatever you want to in here. Tone feedback, work on contact point. You know, I have a, a tutorial video on contact point over on my channel that I have for students. And so if somebody's really, you know, struggling with that, like say in the Prelude to Bach Cello Suite number one, you know, just a little reminder, hey, go check that out. Uh, get a little refresher on how to, you know, bow straight on the cello. Um, and also some, you know, beautiful tone, keep up the great work or great rhythm up here. And also just some boxes where you can hand write in. I'm going to show you that in a second, right? So this is our template. And we're going to go over here to Classroom and create the assignment. All right, so I've got this assignment here ready to go for us. Uh, so I can show you the crucial part to using your iPad. If you need to know how to set up an assignment from the beginning, step by step, I'll put a link here in the cards and you can watch. I have another video uh, where I go into how to create a Google Classroom assignment for listening to your students step by step. So go and watch that. But the part that's really important for using your iPad here for the scoring and feedback is I'm going to go here to add, right? Uh, from my Google Drive, there it is, Bach Prelude Suite. Um, I'm going to add that in. And really important, make a copy for each student. All right, so it's going to take this Google Doc um, and make a copy for everyone that is enrolled in the course. Okay, all right, then I'm going to click this Assign button. It takes a second because it's making all the copies. Great, and then it's assigned and everyone has a copy of it and then the students go and turn those in. All right, the assignment went out and it uh, looks like everyone got their video turned in here. And as you can see, uh, we have the Google Doc, the template for and the video here where each person uh, has turned it in, all right. Got three documents and three videos there. And let me just point out one thing here on the uh, browser so you know how Google Classroom interacts with your drive. When students submit these files here, as you can see, each of the videos that's attached to the assignment, Google Classroom is going to put that in your Google Classroom folder on your drive, all right? The one that is connected to the account that is connected to Google Classroom here, all right? Now, let's take a look at exactly what this looks like on the iPad when you are looking and scoring. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look at what this looks like here on the iPad. Uh, and this configuration that I came up with, I experimented with putting opening the drive and putting classroom on top and and trying to do it different ways and uh, 
my iPad is too old to do split screen. Maybe yours is, will do split screen. Um, and if it will, or if you find a different configuration that works better, uh, leave it in the comments and let us know uh, and share that out. Uh, but this works best for this iPad, so it will work for really any iPad, as I mentioned earlier, because mine is old. All right, so I have Classroom open, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to swipe up. I'm going to grab the Drive app, and I'm going to let it float on top here. And it's going to open up. Oh, it actually was already open there, too. Let me just show you what you're going to see here. All right, so you're going to click on Classroom. And then you're going to find the Trello course or whatever course you're looking for, okay? And then find the folder that has the assignments uh, there listed. You can look at this uh, in icon view, which is great because then you can just see the different students there um, and their tests and then go and find them over here on this screen. Now, to get back to the drive, you're just going to swipe from the right over here and that's going to pop up. Uh, all right, now so that I can watch the video um, and score it and make my comments at the same time, uh, and it's a couple of extra steps here, uh, but if you like, again, if you like writing or uh, this method of grading and feedback is uh, preferable to you, then you'll like this. Um, all right, so here's this, and I'm going to grab this picture in picture here. Okay, and it's hidden back here. Let's put it over here. Go ahead. Swipe over there. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to hit play there. Okay, all right, and then I'm going to click on the feedback sheet. All right, and as you can see, I have my uh, feedback scoring sheet. I'm going to hit this edit icon here so that I can mark up the document. Oh, here we go. All right. Uh, and the score that we gave this earlier was, you know, a four on the rhythm and a three on the tone. All right. And this is great because I could just go along, uh, you know, let's see, uh, you know, could still use a metronome. Okay. Um, I can keep listening to this if I need to. Okay. I can make this bigger, uh, you know, work on contact point. All right. Uh, practice string crossings with a metronome and again here's this link all right to link up if there's a specific tutorial or something I want the students to go see I can put that right here all right and then also uh, you know just some extra spaces here uh, to you know if I want to write something in there okay all right uh, let's see get over to page two here there's something else. I had another little extra checkbox here. Um, you know, if I just want to say something real fast. Okay. Whoops. Great job. Okay. Now, when I'm done with all of this, okay, and I say 4 3, I'm going to put that 7 there, 7 out of 8. And then I'm going to click Save. And it's going to save it as a PDF. It's actually going to save it as a new document here. When we go back, you'll see it, all right, and it says edited, all right, and that's the one with the feedback and the score, and it's actually going to leave my template blank. This is really great because if a student is submitting a retake, um, you have a clean sheet here to give them feedback and score them, and you can see their progress over time uh, and see how they're doing, um, you know, on subsequent, you know, retakes and compare it to see if they are actually improving or what's happening there. That could be a really nice feature for you, Okay. Now, get back to the next person here. Let's get over here. See this person again. We want the picture in the picture. Okay, I'm going to go over here and find their feedback sheet here. Hit the edit button. All right. Oh, look, the video is not backwards. I just noticed that. Um, here we go. The other day, that's why we have some different ones here. Uh, so, oh, look, you got the video right. Here, we're going to give you an 8 out of 8 there and just be done with it. Hit save. So forth and so on. All right. Close that out. And when it, even when I close that out here, it's still going to save this over here. Now, if you don't want to do the screen minimization and have the little floating window down there, you can listen here. 
This is going to play. And you can leave that there. And then you can come back over here when it's actually still playing for us. So here's the feedback sheet for this recording popping up here. Gonna hit markup here and hit play. Let's rewind that. Let's see. Oh, this person gets a six here for the sake of doing something. You know, and I can mark this up with whatever I want to. Okay. Uh, all right, hit save. And the nice thing here is that if I just swipe like this, I can see all of the assignments, the feedback sheets, everything, all right? And I could just swipe to the next one, which could be, you know, really helpful for you if you uh, prefer that method of looking at all of the videos, all right? Now, the reason for the big number at the top here, let's go back over here. So over here on the desktop, as you can see, if I go over here and I'm looking at all the assignments here, let's refresh this. Let's look here at this. This number is nice and big here. I can see this is an eight out of eight. Okay, all right. I can see that that's a seven. I can see that's a six. All right, so quick glance. Oh, and the other thing we forgot here is once you're done scoring, back over here to the drive, is that you can go ahead and put in the grade right here. All right so that it is done. This person got a seven. Okay. This person got eight. Okay. And there it is. I'm gonna return all of that to the students there. And that's probably the easiest, most efficient way to get the grade in there, but if you're like me and you forgot, all right, you can come back over here because this is nice and big in this little preview right here. You can see the number. You cannot read that text uh, in the preview, but you can see this number, so that's why that box is so big. All right, um, I'll leave a link to, if you wanna just go ahead and use this template for yourself, I'll leave a link uh, to a public copy down in the description and you can just grab it uh, and use it. Um, also, you might have noticed that here in this one, there were a couple of uh, the same video here. Depending on the time of year or what's going on in the world, uh, it might take Classroom a little while to process the video, as I discovered. So, um, you can see the background is different. I recorded part of this the other day. Um, and the videos were taking uh, a day or two to process. So I think it's just our uh, unique uh, time here in history at the time of this recording uh, that things are taking so long on the internet and for whatever reason. So usually videos don't take that long to process. Uh, I still think it's a viable option here to have students uh, uploading videos and, and playing. All right. Let me know what you think. And uh, hopefully this is helpful. This is a method you can use. Uh, it does take a few extra steps, like I said. Uh, the scoring of the rubric, you can check out that video, uh, is, of course, much faster and much more efficient. But, you know, this way you can give a lot of feedback. You could put lots of uh, pre-written comments in there that you can just check off uh, and send back to the students, and you can fill it up with links. And it's really easy to give a lot of very specific feedback. Uh, and plus, it's nice to be able to write and sit wherever you want and grade. All right. Uh, let me know what you think and uh, we'll see you next time.